changing faster than ever. What used to take decades is now taking years or even months. What you see right now is the illusion that people have had for many decades about the workplace being the secure place to, to work the rest of your life. For the first time in the history of our nation, our children will not do as well as us. We've seen our friends get laid off, we've been laid off, we've had our pay cut. People are overworked and underpaid. They seem to have less time and less freedom. They live under constant pressure. This is gonna be forced. And so even if your employer loves you, you may, they may have to cut you. There's something wrong that on Monday morning, the heart attack rate increases by 35%. Technology is accelerating, job security is declining. It just doesn't seem like the old models of making a living are as reliable as they used to be. Every aspect of our lives, there's a better way out there, but we're still doing it the old way. We live in the greatest country on the planet, and there are a lot of people sitting around complaining and being cynical. Like everyone's whining about this old model, and I'm like, why don't you leave it? Look at all this over here, look at all this opportunity. Since so much of our lives revolve around our work and the way we make our living, Many people are thinking there just has to be a better way. The biggest challenge facing our world today is not making money, is what are we going to do with all the displaced unemployed people? People are afraid that they're going to make the wrong decision. People are afraid of the unknown. People are afraid that maybe I don't have the skills. Hey, sports fans. Industrial age is over. It's dead. It's dying. That's why going to school to get a job is an obsolete idea. A steady paycheck is an industrial age idea. It's the search for answers that has brought us here together today. My name is Eric Worre, and for almost 30 years I've been an entrepreneur, struggling at times, but ultimately succeeding. As a best-selling author, speaker, and business owner, I've spent my entire career helping millions of people around the world to become entrepreneurs. And I believe strongly that there is, in fact, a better way when it comes to how we make a living. The career landscape has changed dramatically, and many are still working in a model that is completely out of date. What worked for previous generations isn't working as well for people today. In this film, we're gonna explore three important questions. First, what's really going on in our working world today? Second, in this new economy, is it better to become an entrepreneur or is it safer to work for someone else? And third, if a person decides to become an entrepreneur and start their own business, how can they do it without taking on massive risk? To help in this journey, I've brought together some of the greatest experts and thought leaders in the field of entrepreneurship to share the real facts with you. My intention is to give you new information that will allow you to make choices that are not limited by an old, outdated model. Let's start by understanding what's going on in our working world today. Let's look at unemployment. 30, 40% of the people are honestly not working, but would be working. What our government does is if you haven't found a job in six months, we don't call you unemployed. We pretend you dropped out of the labor force. I've often said that unemployment, particularly structural unemployment, that's unemployment due to technological changes, is the first sign of economic growth. Think of it, 10 people live on an island. They go out every day and fish. One day, new technology shows up. A missionary brings them a net. Now, using the net, one pilots the boat, one throws the net. Two fishermen can do all the work 10 used to. That's a 500% increase in productivity two doing the work at 10 in one day. You don't have to learn a lot to learn how to throw a net instead of throw a fishing line. The island's got a big problem, 80% unemployment. But the island still has all the wealth of the fish because the two people produce as much fish as 10 did. Now, of course, looking back in history, these changes used to take thousands of years. And during that time, we went into farming and transportation. Some of us became doctors and some teachers and lawyers. And we developed all these new professions and new manufacturing jobs. Today, these changes are occurring literally in one day when a new technological advance occurs, and we don't have the social structures to deal with it or to retrain the unemployed people. So one of the things that I think is interesting as I travel across the country and really travel around the world is the way that we work and the way we get paid for work 
is changing pretty dramatically. On a global basis, everything is being turned upside down because of the rapidly advancing technologies. Uh, they are eliminating many jobs and we have been left with many people not prepared for the jobs that exist. A lot of demand in public companies was to squeeze out all the fat and to get just as much margin as we possibly could and fat equals humans. So this idea of job security and information age is so obsolete but it's still taught inside our school system and that's where the problem starts. There's no financial education in school system and people are still trained to be employees to work for that paycheck. This is a chart on the middle class. What's happening in the middle class, those that went to school, their incomes have been coming down for years. And parents still say to the kids, go to school, get a job. Now what happens to all those middle class people who are dropping off the ends of the, off the chart? Well, they become what's called working poor. And this is what happens to working poor. But they say poverty is ending. Well, poverty may be ending, but working poverty is going up. And this is food stamp usage. So food stamp usage in America is going through the roof right now because people cannot earn what they call a living wage. Most people have experienced financial pressures that I think are probably greater than they have been in the past. If you're not working for yourself then, it's gonna be a pretty hard road for a lot of people. Today, if you're going to control your future, the 40-40 plan is gone where you can graduate from college and get a job and work for 40 hours a week for 40 years. That day is gone. So some of these charts actually tell you what's going on. And this is a really interesting one, you know. People are going back to school because if I go back to school, I'll get a nice job. But this is what's happening to, it's called Sally Mae, which is the student loan guys. Student loan is going through the roof. It's now over a trillion dollars. And student loan debt is worse than credit card debt. So when people stop using credit card, the government got people into Sally or student loan debt. And student, the problem with student loan debt is you can never be forgiven. See, with credit card debt, you can declare bankruptcy and then all's forgiven. But student loan debt, you can de declare bankruptcy, you still owe it. It's the, it's the worst of all debt. But this is the next picture, look at this chart here. This is what's happening to wages of college graduates. It's going down. So you go to college, you rack up all this debt, but you earn less money. Now that's not that intelligent. Average person who's been working a lifetime in America today is ending their lifetime at 65 with about $41,000 in assets. They earned just enough to survive. I think in the United States we have something like 17 trillion in, in debt. That's just a, gov a federal government debt. We got another two in municipal and in other, let, let's call it almost 20 trillion government. We've got 40 trillion in private debt. That comes up to close to 60 trillion. When you then add something we never had before, what you're talking about, when we look at the unfunded portion of Social Security and primarily Medicare, Medicaid, that at the most conservative estimates from outside firms, Kleiner Perkins, 67 trillion and growing. That's, a, that's more than all our other debt. There's less conservative estimates that say it's 84 trillion or higher. I added up conservatively $127 trillion in total debt. Debt is a financial drug. When you take it to excess, it's like taking a drug. Yeah, it makes you feel better, it enhances your performance, but at a huge cost, eventually it kills you. And, and so that's what happens. We keep doing more and more debt, and you get less and less results, just like a drug, until the debt gets so high that it crushes the whole system. That's where we're at, 8.2 times GDP. You know who I feel sorry for? I feel sorry for the person who dreads going to work, who is sick to their stomach on Monday morning, who hates their alarm clock, who gets a little glimmer of hope on a Wednesday because it's hump day and says, thank God it's Friday. And they live for those two days a week where they get to be themselves and get, they don't have to be around people they don't, they don't like and they don't have to play the political game in the office and they don't have to live this half life. Um, the person that works 50 weeks a year just to be able to have the two weeks for vacation. And you know what happens to most of them nowadays? They don't have a vacation. They have a staycation. They have time off of work, but they don't get to go where they want to go. 
because they're overextended. They've got all this debt. They've got all this situation. They hate their alarm clock. They're, they can't sleep until they're done. They have to spend most of their life in traffic. I feel sorry for that group of people because there's a better way. They just don't know it. I see this really interesting attempt at rugged individuality in a six by eight rectangle. And I feel like you're all the same, uh, except for the little push pins of the pictures. There's different pictures. Yours is named Jenny and his is named uh, Sujara, but it's the same people. And this is how they are. And they're just like the zombies and there's no joy in there. There's no fun. There's always like the wacky woman who decorates her cubicle. And that, that's, that's the most she can do there. You got to give her credits, right? The, the wacky cubicle woman. The basis for their life is worry. I'm, I'm worried, you know, maybe I'll get fired. I'm worried maybe my company will go out of business. I'm worried I can't keep split, spinning the plates on paying the bills. I'm worried about how do I send my kids to college. I'm worried, what if the transmission of my car breaks? That's, you know, two or three. I can't fix it. People live in a, in a sea of worry and it eats at them. Those signs that people held up during the depression didn't say looking for gainful employment in a cubicle. It's said looking for work. Work is what we're looking for. Job is just a unit of measurement. Work is what we're going after. It's time to look in the mirror and say, it's not the economy, it's my economy. It's my little world of where I am. I need to improve. I'm not going to wait for the economy to come back because frankly, the economy is doing great in this country. So I'm here on Wall Street, the financial center of the universe, the financial capital of the world. This is where most people's money goes to at least be held for a time, right? With interest rates in banks being effectively zero, and many experts are predicting it's going to stay at zero for the next 10, 20, even 30 years, people feel like they don't have any choice but to put their future into equities, to put their future into the hands of other people on this stock market, and hope that the stock market goes up. Hope that the stocks that their advisors pick or that they pick goes up. That's one way to go, I guess. It's my personal belief that if you put your future into the hands of yourself, in other words, you have earning power by yourself, I think you're a better investment than these guys. I think you can, controlling your future is a better option than handing over your retirement to these guys. The average household income in the United States is approximately $50,000 a year, what they call the middle class. To reach the top 25% of income earners, you need to earn at least $90,000 a year. To reach the top 10% would be a household income of $140,000, the top 5% $190,000, and to be in the top 1%, you'd need a combined household income of at least $380,000 a year. So here's the question. What do you think would give you the best chance to move up and get to the top 10%, the top 5%, the top 1% or beyond? In my opinion, and in the opinion of many, many experts, the answer is to become an entrepreneur, to become your own boss. I think you have to be a business owner. I, I can't, the only time I ever say to someone it'd be great to be an employee is when they've already told me they've surrendered. I only tell people who are uh, wounded spiritually that they should be an employee. And it's that feeling that you get when you uh, pick up the backpack off the little Cub Scout and say, don't worry, little guy, we'll get you back to the camp. You know, it is not a, it is in no way a kindness when I tell someone they'd be a great employee. The other status symbol really increasingly is lifestyle. And people can own their own business, maybe even work out of their house. That, I tell you, people admire that. Like, gosh, I wish I could do that. The spirit of the entrepreneur is to be a risk taker and to be resourceful and unstoppable and to have a vision of yourself beyond where you are and not willing to settle for life as it is. Think about the great entrepreneurs.